You ready for me to send it? I'm yeah. going to send it anyway. Whatever. Like whenever. Welcome back to another video, mm -hmm. you hardworking men and women. It's time to clock in. And when I say clock in, I mean hit that like button if you're watching this. In this video, we're going to talk about the top penny stocks to buy right now, the ones that are running 80, 90, 100%. We're going to take a look at them together with you and see if they're a money-making opportunity. We do this live every single day at 8.30 a.m. So if you're brand new to this, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, and don't miss out because time after time, we've shown that you can get 30, 40, 50, 60% gains before the market even opens sometimes. So hopefully today will be one of those days. If you've been here a while, make sure you go down to the live chat. Let us know our audio is good and ready to roll. And uh, yeah, just get down there and say good morning, baby. And you know Mike is going to go on a rant. You know the deal. You better not be a freeloader in today's chat. You better make sure you hit the like button uh, before we ever give you a watch list today. So we'll give everybody a few minutes here to pile in because I know we're sending messages out right now. And then we'll get to rocking and rolling. And I see a couple people that said uh, Crisp Rocks. So if you guys don't know, Crisp, if we ever say that name, is a analyst inside of our private academy who calls stocks all day. He puts all of his alerts in, inside of our Discord, and he also texts them out sometimes too. But yeah, he caught a banger uh, last night. It was a swing trade, and people were already making money early this morning. So bada boom, bada bang, baby. Mike, just let me know whenever you get done sending that message out, and then I'll pitch it over to you. Yep, yep. Um, I am ready whenever, but we don't have nearly enough likes to start going over this watch list yet. So I'll give you one for now. MRAI, which is the swing trade that Crisp uh, texted out last night. And we got to figure out, Andrew and me, we'll figure this out for you guys later. Unfortunately, the text only went to about half of you. We have kind of half of you on one text system and half of you on another. So unfortunately, only kind of half of you got the text from Crisp. But he texted out the level of 64 cents on MRAI last night. He was loading from 64 to 68 cents. It spiked to a dollar oh two this morning, which was like a, almost a 60% gain. Um, right now, you're sitting roughly about 15% up. If you'd still hold it, you're still holding it now. You loaded where he told you. You're still about 16% up. But from this point, I texted out a new level from this morning. If you didn't play the levels that he texted you last night, the new levels I'm ultimately looking for on MRAI is, I want to see it break a dollar. But it's not necessarily going to be a blue sky breakout at a dollar. And honestly, I didn't see any pocket aces set up this morning. Um, but this one was one of the ones on my watch list. And I guess we got to wait just a little bit here before we can get into any other tickers because we don't have nearly enough likes. This, we, this isn't the Christmas spirit here, guys. We also don't have nearly enough viewers neither. I think everybody is sleeping in this morning. Obviously, they don't have that notification bell turned on. But we are going live a little bit early today. Um, unfortunately, guys, Brendan's not able to make it to the live stream today. He woke up and uh, his phone is just not working. So he's trying to get that figured out now. But that's all right. We'll still call these bangers for you guys. Comment down below. Did you guys make any money this morning? Have you taken any trades? I'd love to hear from you guys. So if you've taken any trades or if you made any money or hell, if, if you've lost any money, just share down below. Share your experience in the live chat. Trisha said, you guys did great. Uh, calling out LMBS yesterday. I didn't trade, but watch to yep. learn. Yep, that was a big one for us. Let me see here. IMBS yesterday, that was a 47% gainer texted right to your phone, and it was the only one I texted. Um, so that was incredible. That was definitely a great day. But that's what we try to do, guys. I just try to narrow down the best potential leads. What I try my best to do is not text you 10 stocks that may be, may or not, and then just brag about the one that does good. I hate that. That's what everybody else does. I'd just rather narrow that list down and give you just a few that I think have the best possible potential so that you don't have to go through 10, 20, 30 different stocks kind of thing. Um, do, 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 do. Seventy-one likes, 120 people watching. We are almost there, guys. Get us to 100 likes, and we will give you more tickers, more entry levels, more price targets. More. Do, 
Do do do. Brendan broke his pretty little iPhone this morning, huh? <laughs> That's what it sounds That's like. It's only going to cost three thousand dollars to fix with insurance. Basically, Brendan said, "Hey man, let's uh let's get to the office at five a.m. tomorrow. Let's get to work early, man. Let's put the work in." <laughs> I texted him at like four fifty, and uh, <laughs> he didn't respond. I texted him again at like five a.m. on the dot. He didn't respond. I was like, "Nah, bro, I'm going back to sleep." <laughs> And then uh, he messaged me. I think he had to message me from his Mac. Uh, He's like, uh, his phone died, blah, blah, blah. Or uh, he couldn't get it to work or some shit. Damn. That's all right. Cisco broke my door handle yesterday. I saw that. I mean, well, that thing was on its last leg, to be fair. Yeah, it really was. It was already sticking pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mile Zero Fight said, Team Alpha put me in a different tax bracket this year. Welcome to the big leagues, baby. <laughs> um, that's fucking awesome. That's one hell of a sentence. Yep, yep. Uh, Good Life said he followed IMBS yesterday and got a 40% gain. Martin said, hello, Santa. <laughs> Uh, Star Cook said he needs to stop watching that midget porn on his phone. Yep. Yep. That's probably why his phone is broke. We're almost there. I see 90 likes on the board. 90 likes. All we need is 10 more. There's currently right now 40 um, Grandma, freeloaders. I did see your message about SSR, but I don't know what it means. I don't know what you're asking me. Do, do, do. says congrats on your betrothal try to say that 10 times fast yep quentin we don't quite have 100 likes yet so you didn't miss out on the watch list so all good once we get there we got six more likes to go all we need is six more freeloaders to step up step up to the plate baby jose i met you yesterday if you're watching right now you better have hit that like button Next time I come into Truist, we're going to talk. 97 likes. Three more to go. All right, all right, all right. I see it. I see it. All right, let's give you another one. So MRAI is still on my watch list. Ultimately, if you haven't entered it yet, I want to see it break a dollar. I don't see a blue sky breakout opportunity on this one necessarily. And it is Friday where we generally see a lot more selling than we do earlier in the week. We see a lot less volume overall than we do earlier in the week. And we see a lot less buying volume overall than we do earlier in the week. Taking this all into account, I think it's a great idea to consider locking in much smaller profit percentages on Friday than you maybe typically would call it Monday through Wednesday. So maybe consider taking profits more aggressively on Friday, taking all that into consideration. Moving on to the list, INBS is on my watch list again. This was already a big winner for the uh, channel, for the team here. Um, but the next breakout level I'm looking for is 74 cents on this one. This one, I don't really see another great level until about a dollar. So this one I think has the best potential of the day if it can get above 74 cents again. And then I would be looking to scale out before it hit a dollar, expecting obvious resistance at a dollar. And that right there is a 40% window there if it could go all the way there. But again, it's not a bad idea to consider playing uh, more conservatively on Friday. So you don't necessarily have to try for that whole 40% window. Um, but that's the one right there, high on my watch list, INBS, uh, 74 cent break. And the only other one I'm really watching right now is DRCT, also not a blue sky breakout opportunity from what I see on all these daily resistance levels I have mapped out. But I'm looking for DRCT to break um, $4. Yeah, I'm with you, Mike. I was scanning through the top gainers and there's a bunch of no, no, no pocket aces. Maybe we need to give Bob a slap over here. But, you know, you always have opportunities that pop up in the market. Sometimes it's not in pre-market. Like yesterday, Mike was in Discord, like, just, you know, even after our, our private live stream, I think we hopped off at around, like, close to 1030. And then Mike was just still in the Discord with everybody. And we had a couple more trading opportunities that popped up. I think um, 
The ticker symbol was J A N. Is that correct, Mike? Like we called you called later on in and the day. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, Jan, right here, um, we were calling for the breakout of 65 cents. It ran to 85. That was 30%, 31% right there. And then, guys, how about old, uh, was it? Yeah, it was, was it. Go ahead. I was just going to say, talk about IMBS. That was easy money play right there as soon as it got into that gap, guys. That gap started, remember, at 53 cent. And it goes all the way to a dollar. So, I mean, there's still like a gap fill opportunity if it breaks above 73 cent right here, which is where the five minute candle got rejected. But, you know, we got uh, that wasn't the best, like perfect confirmation right there. But you did get confirmation of the break of pre market highs on the five minute time frame. You were able to take that up. I mean, you could have got anywhere. I made the video on it. I tried to push the video out as quick as I could yesterday to try and uh, alert everybody about it. Uh, but you had a nice 30% window right there where you could have taken profit. So congratulations to everybody that made money on IMBS yesterday. It didn't completely fill that gap. And I want you guys to know that whenever we talk about these gaps, historically speaking, they're like magnets. And a lot of times they can get fully uh, filled. But still, you still want to have the same type of trading plan. You still want to be taking profits aggressively. You still want to use a tight stop loss, all of those things. Um, even though it gets into the gap, don't get FOMO and think, oh, we're definitely going all the way from 53 cent all the way up to a dollar. You're still going to have the same type of trading plan. Usually just those gap deals. Sometimes they give us bigger gains than, you know, normal breakouts. Yeah. Um, Grandma Ruby. So the short sale restricted. I have not been following crypto at all very closely or SoFi at all. I couldn't really tell you anything in regards to that. I know, what was it, South Korea or some shit just banned short selling in general. As far as that goes for the U.S., if that's what you're asking for, like short sale restrictions, I don't think it's ever going to happen in the U.S. I wish it would, and I would vote for it a million times over, but I don't think it's going to happen. I think the U.S. has become too corrupt of a system, and we're never going to get actual market reform, and they are never going to punish these hedge funds or make them stop shorting. Like I, I think the problem's too big to fail at this point, and they're not going to allow them to fail. I don't know. I'm pessimistic to see if we're ever going to short sale restrict anything here in the U.S., um, not when Kenneth Griffin is the biggest donor to all of the fucking politicians and he's the one shorting these stocks into oblivion and he owns literally both parties. Like, I don't think it's ever going to fucking happen. Um, and then Brooke says, any interest in TCON? So this one is definitely on my watch list and I'm literally at the top of my watch list. It was already a huge winner for the channel and for our team here. But right now, there's so many resistance levels on the daily. I have like literally dozens of them drawn. People are saying that my, uh, I look like Charlie Sheen with all these lines on the chart. TCON, I just think, has so many levels of resistance. It has a super high risk to it. Could it shatter through all of them? Yeah, absolutely. Stocks can do that all the time. But me trying to predict that versus... I don't know. I think you guys get the point. Just I think this one has too high a risk for the little bit of reward that it may bring you. It was already a big winner, but I don't see any big pockets here. The biggest pocket I see is from 48 cents to 55 cents, and that's about a 15% channel. But all of the other resistance channels um, are less than that. If but that can, can be a channel you could look to play on TCON, maybe if it either breaks 43 or if it breaks 48, and then look to scale out by 55. That could be an opportunity there, I suppose. Or if it breaks through 85 cent. <laughs> yeah, yeah, way up there. If it does that, though, really. Yeah, I mean, that's the big one. Because um, then we get into like, we get really close to that gap. And then, you know, at uh, $1.20, it would be in a a uh, technical uh, gap, but long ways away from there. Definitely don't think it's going to be hitting that today, especially not on a Friday. Yeah. Comment ASTR. Down so this one was a small winner for the channel. This one we were talking about in the live stream yesterday. ASTR, we called the break of $1.23. It hit $1.46. That was an 18% gain we called live yesterday. ASTR, I guess you could put on your watch list, but ultimately I'd be looking for it to break. Um, let me get my line real good here. 
a dollar forty. And that one candle touched uh, the tip of it touched a dollar forty six the wick. But I'd look for it to ultimately break a dollar forty on ASTR. But this is still not a pocket aces setup, and the volume is not ideal. The five minute period from seven fifty five to eight a.m. only had one share traded at a dollar. Mots. Let me pull that one up. Mots, I really do not like the volume. If you go to regular trading hours yesterday, most of these candles represent a thousand or less shares at five dollars a share. So there is not a lot of dollar money value going through this stock, MOTS. Makes for a risky setup. Scott, I got your uh, friend request on, on chess yesterday. You said download chess time live. Is that, um, is that like, uh, what is that? Is that part of the chess.com app or is that like a separate app? Lawrence said he made 75% profit on INBS mm. yesterday. That's fucking awesome. Uh, that is great execution. It sounds like you caught the bottom and top of like where we called it. But I have a question for you. What was your plan the whole time? When you, pre ple <laughs> when you pressed the buy button, did you plan to sell it a 75% profit? Because if that was your plan, that's fucking wild. Or kind of walk me through what you were doing there, Lawrence, because I think that was a pretty bold strategy, and most people probably did not hold that long. That's ballsy. You know, INVO is interesting. Um, I kind of I kind of hate it. I kind of like it. <laughs> so INVO is like, uh, I don't know, it's, it's been very illiquid the past few days. I mean, I usually just stay away from charts like this. But we had some prior levels that I had mapped out on this, so I feel like we've we've mapped it out and traded it before on the top gainers list. Uh, but when when you zoom out and like go to the one hour, like if we were able to break through like one sixty, like I don't this resistance doesn't seem that like it's going to be very strong to me. Um, it's interesting. I don't know. We'll see. I'm not in love with it. I don't hate it, but keep INVO on the watch list. I'd probably be watching for the breakout above like. 165 maybe we could see something good I'm just on october 23rd in our live stream we called for the break of a dollar 50 on invo it ended up running to 304 so 103 percent gainer in our live stream later in the day we texted the oh well that was a it never broke out when we texted it but we called it in our live stream at a dollar 50 ran to 304 before there we go telling you man some of these stocks they just they uh you know they come up on the top gainers they die out they make a huge retracement and then give it about a month or two and then they drop more news and investors get excited and it's like the same rodeo all over again the rinse and repeat the smart traders make money and then everybody knows what the losers do holding hope baby holding hope holding hope cuck and duck it's going to come back. And technically, yeah, INVO is kind of running. And it is breaking through pre-market highs right now. But I'll just be very like careful. like if you go back just a few days on the five-minute chart, maybe the big break opportunity is somewhere around $1.40. Yeah, I had this old level at 142. Um, but you don't have to go back that far on the five minute chart to find some levels. <clears throat> I think we might Currently be above the VWAP. Yeah, that's a bullish indicator. And remember, these are the EMAs, the VWAP, they're all indicators. Um, and you don't want to ever rely on only one indicator, typically. You want to use them in combination with each other to help kind of 
verify or validate each other, if you will. But that is a bullish indicator that it's above the VWAP. Bro, I have no idea what's going on with our text messages, but I literally just got the the live trading text. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. it's slick text right now. So I, if you guys were here at the beginning of the stream, I kind of that half of you happen to be on one system and half of you happen to be on the other. And typically the one that was the better system today is the worst system and there's like a 10 minute delay on it. I don't know. As soon as we hop off the live stream, we'll get on the phone with the support and try to figure out what's causing this lag for half of you. Um, sorry about that, but we'll try to get it resolved here quickly. Yeah, I just got it too. Yeah, holy cow. We've been live now for 15 minutes. Yeah, I know. 20 minutes because we started early. Market kind of sucks, sucks this morning. Um, Silver so Mass says he didn't get Chris text this morning. So, yeah, it's not the text message from Crisp, unfortunately. Um, that's one more issue we kind of have to figure out is how to get him linked to kind of both. Um, his text is only linked to one half of our system. So unfortunately, half of you did not get the message from Crisp. That's something Andrew and I are trying to sort out and hopefully we can get resolved quickly for you guys. And uh, <clears throat> for all you savvy investors, and I'm only talking to the savvy investors, I said this in multiple live streams. I just want to repeat it again today. For any of you that are very experienced in crypto, I just want to give you guys a little, a little view of what I'm kind of looking at right here. So I'm popping this up on screen. So this right here is the gaming sector, crypto gaming sector. And I want you to focus in on the seven day percentage and just look at all of this. This whole sector is fucking, and I'm not saying it's the perfect time to FOMO in, but this whole sector is going crazy. Look at this. Green, 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 green. One red, green, 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 57%, 36%, 56%, 54%, 28, 46, 42, 3, 32, 14, 28. You could throw shit on a wall. Just literally, you could throw shit inside of this sector right now and you'd be making money. I don't want to point out any specific coins or anything like that. It's highly risky. All of this shit is very risky. But this whole sector is just fucking moving right now. If I was you guys, I would definitely be keeping an eye on Bitcoin. Um, I know we normally don't talk about crypto. I just want to talk about money making, uh, money making opportunities though. But Bitcoin uh, leads the way for all of this. So Bitcoin right now is sitting at thirty seven thousand. Yesterday it hit thirty eight thousand. If you really zoom out here, uh, I mean, and this is the great thing about learning, uh, you know, how to chart, guys. You could take a look at your levels here, right? So if we break through like 40K right here, you're gonna see a lot of FOMO in the market. The next level after that is probably gonna be somewhere around this level right here, which is around 47-ish, right? And if we break through 47, guys, and we start moving into the 50s, uh, last bull run, the gaming sector, when Bitcoin started taking off like this, fucking exploded. And when I mean exploded, guys, you're talking about 50, 60, 70, 80 Xs in some of these crypto gaming coins. So. Just for all you savvy investors that know what the hell you're doing, take a look at that sector um, and see if you can't make some money. For everybody else that has no idea what the hell I was just talking about, don't worry about it. It's very complicated. It's very risky. And if you don't know what you're doing, you'll lose a lot of money. Yeah. Um, let me kind of get off topic for a second here. Two questions I want to hit. Gator Radzi said, I didn't get a text from Chris, but he did put it in the Discord. So yeah, all of our texts are also always in the Discord as well. So if our text system ever fails in any way, the good fail safe is Discord because it's always in the text alert channel or the crisp alert channel. So all of the alerts are always in the Discord as well as a fail safe. Um, excellent point there, Gator Radzi. And then Lawrence says, um, with the 75% gain, he said he's a little too eager sometimes with his buy-in, but he's going to start using the breakout strategy to get his investments profitable. So yeah, you, you made a, an excellent trade there yesterday, but in my opinion, it sounds like it was pure luck that you got 75% on that trade. Congratulations. Um, count it as a win, of course, 
But I think if you're just rushing to buy any ticker that's mentioned, like for the breakout strategy specifically, if you're just buying any ticker we mentioned, you're gonna be taking a lot of losing trades in that case because you're not waiting for confirmation. There's a, roughly half of the alerts over the last like 90 days, or I wouldn't say half, maybe 30 to 40% of the alerts that I've sent over the last 90 days have never broke above the price that I called for the breakout. So I said, I'm looking for the break of a dollar. Roughly 30 to 40% of the time, it never breaks the dollar or whatever that price is. So you take that trade and it's probably gonna be end up being a losing trade at least 30 to 40% of the time because of that. But if you're waiting for the confirmation, the strategy is now 90% plus um, accurate and only 10% or less end up resulting in a stop loss position because you end up waiting for confirmation that way. Now with that, you may not get a lot of 75% wins doing that, but you end up with less than 10% of your overall trades being losers and I think that that's a way better strategy than holding hope, cuck and duck, and trying to get 75% per trade. Because you will once in a while like you just did, but more often than not, you're gonna have a lot of losers and that 75% doesn't end up meaning shit then in the end of, in the end of it. Yeah. Hope that helps. And on that note, man, for, for all of y'all that are currently unprofitable or red right now, and you're not journaling all of your trades, you have to start doing that so you can have more context on it. Is it your trading plan or is it your damn execution of the trades? Because some of y'all, you're great at trading plans, but you're horrible at execution or vice versa, right? You guys have to start doing that. And your number one goal in trading is you need to stop losing money as fast as possible. The longer you lose money or the longer you just stay unprofitable, break even, the more likely you are to stop trading within the next 12 months. I cannot tell you how many people that come through, they just don't put in the time to work or they don't have patience and then they stay unprofitable. And then before you know it, they've just given up completely on the stock market. They go back to their regular job. They fucking succumb to the, I'm just going to work a nine to five. And I'm, this is all I can do because I couldn't figure out the stock market. And they just give up. You guys, like, if you're unprofitable in the market right now, you've been unprofitable for a while, you need to have some fucking sense of urgency because the longer you stay unprofitable, you're going to give this shit up soon because it just doesn't make any sense. You're losing money. You need to get profitable as quick as possible. And a big part of that is journaling trades. So what I tell people, like, you know, for example, a lot of people try to learn all they can on YouTube and learn all they can, like, via us on YouTube and stuff like that. And, like, I'm all for it. Get that free education in and do it. But like your main goal is like you better get profitable as quick as possible because if not, you're going to end up giving up on trading. And I'm going to be honest with you, even for myself, if I would have went unprofitable for like, I don't know, I've talked to some people who's been unprofitable for over fucking two years now, and I don't even know how they made it that long. But what I've noticed is for most people, if they stay unprofitable for about two to three months, they end up giving up. So they get excited. They're like, oh, I can make money, but I'm unprofitable for a couple months. Oh, I couldn't figure it out. They give it up. They go back to their normal day job, and then they're fucked. And then they're broke you for the rest of their life. So don't do that. Guys, you got to get profitable as quick as possible. Journal your trades. Write them down. Stay disciplined. Sko had a good point here. He said, Weeble has a great feature. You can add text to the screen. So I've been using it to trade uh, or to journal your trades. Um, I don't hate that idea. I don't like having to go to that specific chart to see your notes, but I don't think it's a bad idea to put notes on the charts of the stocks you're doing. I, I like that idea a lot. And it's right up there if, uh, Andrew, I think his screen zoomed in a little bit too much, but it's towards the top of where you're looking at with your charts and it, it's the two, it's an uppercase T and a lowercase T icon that says text. You can just click that, point it anywhere on your chart, and then you can type uh, whatever kind of note you want. That's a helpful feature. Thanks for, um, uh, mentioning that. But I do think it's important to journal your trades outside of each specific chart so you can see them all together without having to click to a million different screens. Ray, that's an okay idea too. You can do that. Um, put notes on the chart and then screen clip it and make a trading folder that way. Yep, you can do that way. Whatever works for you guys. As long as you're collecting the data 
but then not only that you're collecting it, but then every now and again, you have to take the time to go analyze it and then adjust your plan accordingly. Um, so it's not just about collecting it, but you also have to analyze it. Remember that. Some people just journal, 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 and then 120 days later, nothing changed. And they're like, well, I don't know, I've been journaling. But did you ever go back and what did you learn from the journaling? What did you learn from your trades? Did you learn that Mondays suck? Did you learn that you hate Thursdays? Did you learn that you hate 9.30 a.m.? If you don't have any like, um, information from the data you collected, then it was useless and it was pointless. So for me personally, it's about every two weeks to 30 days, I go back and I look at the last two weeks or the last 30 days of my performance and I play out a bunch of different scenarios. What if I always took profit at 5%? How much would my portfolio have been up in the last 30 days if I did that across all these trades? Um, how much would I have been up if I took profit at 10%? How many losses would I, would I have had if I always used a 5% stop loss. How many losses would I have had if I always used a 10% stop loss? And you play out these hypothetical scenarios and it does take some time to kind of analyze and um, incorporate this data like this, but the information you get is absolutely critical and it can be transformative to your own trading journey. Yeah, I need to play around with Weeble even more. Like uh, they just update it so often. They you have this little tool here called data and price range, which is kind of cool. If you take it and highlight it over the candlesticks, it'll tell you the amount of candlesticks. So we got 22 bars. Actually, let me make that a little bit wider. We got 23 bars for one hour and 55 minutes, and then it'll just tell you the volume. Volume is 1.8 million in the past uh, one hour and 55 minutes. Yeah, that's kind of cool. I like that. I might start using it. Joseph says he still doesn't get the confirmation thing, although I would be happy to describe this. Since you're sharing your screen, Andrew, do you want to give him a good explanation of what a confirmation looks like using the breakout strategy? Yeah, let me go for it. All right, bro. So what you're going to do is uh, you're going to go, first of all, to the five minute time frame. That's the most important thing. You got to get on the right time frame and you have to have extended hours turned on. So that's the first step. So you might want to write these down, Joseph. Uh, five minute time frame, turn extended hours on. Okay, once you do those two things, you're going to see candlesticks just like mine, right? Now, what we're looking for in pre-market is we just want to see how high did this stock go on the five-minute time frame. As you can see right here, this is the highest candlestick, right? So instead of going off of this long, skinny line, what we do is we go off the body of the candle, which is the big rectangle part. Now, once I see the highest peak that the body of the candle reached, I'm coming up here to the top left corner. I'm drawing me a horizontal line right at that price. So for example, MRAI, uh, high for the day for the five minute candle is 95 cent. Now I'm not gonna talk about psychological levels here, but let's just say we were playing the breakout of 95 cent. So this five, uh, this candle right here, like for example, we already have this mapped out. Let's say these candles start to move up. Do, 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 And a five minute candle pops above 95 cent. You're like, holy shit, I should take this trade. It's breaking out. But whoa, 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 slow your roll here. We wait for confirmation, which means all you're waiting for is for a five minute candle to close above 95 cent. So for example, let's zoom in on a candle. What does close mean? So you know when a candle opens up, we can just take a look at the current candle, even though it's not moving that much. Uh, but when a candle opens up, I'll just go over this one. This is the open right at the bottom and then it closes. So you're waiting for the candle to close above 95 cents. And if it closes above 95 cents, it gives you confirmation to actually enter the trade using this strategy, okay? Comment down below if that makes sense. I'll try to keep this as simple as possible. But I'll go through that step just for a recap. Five minute time frame, turn on extended hours, uh, map out pre-market high using the body of the candle, and then wait for confirmation of another five minute candle to close above that breakout level that you mapped out. If that sound if that sounds like Chinese, comment down below and let me know. Just comment say Chinese. I think I think you described it pretty well. Um, no, we're using Weeble right here. Um, I really like Weeble for and Andrew and I both really like Weeble for day trading the top gainers using the breakout strategy specifically. Um, 
my other favorite platform would be Thinkorswim, but I think Weeble is a little prettier, easier on the eyes. It's more aesthetically pleasing. It's a little more user friendly, but there's absolutely nothing wrong with Thinkorswim. And actually Thinkorswim offers more features than Weeble does. Um, it's just a little harder to learn and takes a little more time commitment on your part. But those are my two preferred trading platforms. TradingView is okay, um, nothing wrong with that. A lot of our members in our academy use TradingView. Um, but what we're showing on screen right here is Weeble. Trent said, clear as mud. <laughs> That's hilarious. Why not include the wicks when marking the highs? Because the wicks are just a little weaker. And sometimes we do consider the wicks. If like you see three different times a wick touched the same spot, in that case, I might use that level. But if it's only one wick, we don't want to use that because that's typically pretty weak and it was maybe only one share hypothetically at that price. It doesn't even mean multiple shares were traded. It just means at least one share sold at that price right there. But the majority of the shares were sold down here where the body of the candle was. Yeah, it's like all the brokers are at, uh, doing about 5% back on your account. Like, I know Robinhood's doing it. I know Weeble's doing it. I don't know if TD Ameritrade is doing it. I don't think so. TD Ameritrade don't offer no fucking specials. A <laughs> um, couple good questions here. Um, Ozzy says, if it opens below the confirmation, is it invalid? So technically, yes, because we want to see a close and open. In most cases, if it closes above, it almost always opens above as well. If you want to be more conservative, though, I would wait for maybe that third candle. So you have the close above, you have the open above, and maybe wait for that second candle to also close above. That's super bullish. The only problem with that though is if you wait that next five minute period, a lot of times it's already moved 15% higher and now you don't have a good entry anymore. Um, but that would be a more conservative speaking thing. But technically it would be invalid. If you opened below, after getting the close above, it would be invalid, but definitely still on high watch. Yeah, and the reason why we and wait for another co confirmation, just to piggyback on that, is just because like, um, if you don't wait for confirmation, you're gonna think the strategy don't work because you're gonna end up entering trades that end up being fake outs and waiting for confirmation will save you from entering trades that end up being fake outs. You'll, you won't get into stocks too early and end up losing money. Another good question here was, I gotta find it again. Um, I don't see it anymore, but I remember what the question was. Basically, do you keep reinvesting all of your money as your portfolio continues to grow? I think the answer for most people is a combination of yes and no. It's never a bad thing to take your profits out of the market and use it in the real world or reinvest it into other things. Absolutely, you should be doing that. You don't want to trade for, call it, six months at a time and never take any of your profits. At some point, maybe six months later, the market crashes, they take away the buy button, you lose it all, and then you spent six months gaining all this money and you never paid yourself. That's like the worst possible scenario. Definitely be paying yourself as you go. Now, how often? That's completely up to you, whether it's weekly, monthly, bi-monthly, quarterly, yearly, whatever. That's completely your decision. But you should be taking profits as you go, and you should also be reinvesting some as you go as well. But at a certain point, many traders get to the point where you can't necessarily day trade with a million dollars per trade on some of these stocks. Again, we tell you every day, we want to see the dollar volume that's currently being traded. So you take the current volume, how many shares are being traded, you multiply it by the current share price, and that's going to give you the dollars that are moving through that stock within your current time frame. We use the five minute time frame so you can see like $20,000 is moving through the stock on any given five minute time frame. Now, if you are coming in here and trying to throw a wad of $75,000 at a stock that's only trading $20,000, you're going to run into a lot of issues of getting your orders filled, especially in the pre-market when you can only use a limit order. So at a certain point, you cannot continue to just throw your whole wad at these plays because at a certain point, your wad gets to be too big. So 
hopefully you guys reach that level at some point, but just know that at some point that is going to happen. And then there's absolutely no reason not to pay yourself because you can't necessarily throw $100,000 at every single breakout strategy day trade we're giving you kind of thing. Uh, I hope that makes sense. I don't know, Mike. Millionaires do. Multi-millionaires. Well, they're, they're also playing different stocks in a lot of times when you're doing that. You can, but I'm just, and there's some stocks you absolutely can, but not every stock. And you have to kind of mentally, manually do that math in your head. Is there enough volume in the stock currently to support my order? Um, sometimes the answer will be yes. You can throw a million dollars at it right now. Maybe there's a hundred million dollars going through the stock and no one's even going to notice your million. Um, that does happen. Absolutely. But then there's also times where it's only $20,000 moving through and you're not going to get shit filled at your million dollar wad. Appreciate that, Hadi. Um, I'm sorry if I butchered your name there, um, but we greatly appreciate that. $5. Super chat. Mike, bro. Oh, I'm going to tell you this on live. I think maybe you should just throw a small amount, small amount into some crypto, bro. <laughs> well, the last time you convinced me to do that, you were I up. lost $60,000. But you were up. It's because you got greedy. Now, I'm not blaming you for my loss. The loss is my own fault. I placed the trade and I'm the one that held the whole way down. It is not your fault. But the last time you convinced me to get into crypto, I made some very poor decisions through my own judgment. And I don't know if I ever want to touch crypto again. I lost 60 fucking thousand dollars last time. But I've been successful with stocks. I have not been successful with crypto. Imagine how you would feel if you just took profits aggressively. Well, I, I didn't. <laughs> I held. I, I did the cuck and duck, holding hope, and it left me broke. Um, but for all of you that are watching crypto, uh, Ethereum did just uh, break Appreciate out above 2000 bucks, which is very, very bullish. Next level is probably going to be like around 2500 So Ethereum is looking really good, too. It's starting to break out as well. Honestly, that breakout on Ethereum is way better than the breakout on Bitcoin as well. Plus now I ain't got no money. I'm I'm fucking broke. That's because you put 99% of your income into fucking single family homes. That's not true. Two of them are duplexes. Tomato tomato. It's dual family. Grandma says, Mike, you still haven't watched Dumb Money? No, I did go see it. That was actually a great movie. Um, yeah, I saw that. It was pretty good. <laughs> Dustin said, did you journal and analyze your crypto? No, I shoved that shit deep, deep down, and I try not to ever think about it again. Fucking Brendan just made fun of me the other day. I put like at one point sixty to ninety thousand dollars into bytes, and at the time it bought me like six hundred bytes. Brendan just was bragging to me the other day. He's like, "Hey, I just bought six hundred bytes for five thousand bucks." God damn it, that is so embarrassing, humiliating. It's a it's a knot in your stomach to know you're down on a position like ninety five percent. It's worth pennies on the dollars. That's that's my biggest loss I've ever had. Bites. It's coming back. That's my back older story. That's my cuck and duck story. Yeah, that's my cuck and duck. We all have one, and that's mine. Oh, damn, Dustin. Dustin said he got $1,000 worth of doge up to 84000 and held the bag like an idiot. Oh, dear God. That sucks. I had a, my brother-in-law, uh, if my sister's watching this stream right now, my brother-in-law was kind of an idiot with Doge. He got in super early before I even knew what Doge was. This guy was buying it like sub a penny and some shit. He had a lot. It went to like 60, 70 cents. It pulled back a little bit to 50 cents. I told him a dozen times to sell that shit. It's going to dump. And what did it do? It fucking dumped. Like, man, you had the chance to, you would have made so much money. You were buying sub a penny and it went to 50 cents. Ugh. But we all have that same story. We've all done it. Unfortunately, that's a lesson that we usually all choose to learn the hard way.
Yep. No matter what other people around us tell us, we're like, nah, I'm a cucking duck. <laughs> so fully respect the cucking duck. I feel like you have to do it at least once. And then you never want to go back because it hurts. It stings. It fucking gives you little tummy aches. It makes you want to throw up. It's like, bleh. like, don't even bring it up. I don't even want to talk about it. Um, yeah, and it, it teaches you a lesson, that's for sure. When you lose a lot of unrealized gains one time in your life, and you watch all of that money dwindle away, uh, it's fucking, it's, it's heart-wrenching. Yeah. It makes you want to cry and throw up and punch something all at the same time, simultaneously. Yep, yep. Um, um, somebody guys, asked, can you go ahead and plot out um, the breakout for INBS? I'll let you do that since you're screen sharing. But I'm looking for the breakout of 74 cents on INBS, and I'm looking to play it to about a dollar. That would be the top of the channel. You nailed it. That's all I got to say. <laughs> Good talk. Yeah, 70, 74 cents right there. Uh, that was the high for yesterday. I mean, the high for pre-market today is technically around 71, but yesterday's high was at 74, so it just makes so much more sense to play the 74 cent breakout. So five-minute candle, close and open above 74 cent, probably be in a pretty good spot to get a nice, you know, 10, 15% move. Said he bought Doge for 300 bucks and he made seven grand out of it. That is such a phenomenal trade. Great job. I think you probably held way too long, but great job. Alfred, not if it not if it goes against your trading plan. You write your trading plan down before you you invest. And if it hits your stop loss, you just you just sell. You just hit the damn sell button. If it hits your stop loss, and then you're like, well, I'll wait a few hours to see if it turns green. I promise you, in this penny stock top gainer land. You are going to lose money way more often than you make money because I would say about eight out of ten of these stocks never bounce back. They just they continue on their code brown. So it's just like you got to stick to your plan. Whatever your plan was before you answered the, the trade, you got to stick to it. Meanwhile, we were looking for the break of a dollar forty on INVO, and it's getting close. Oh, which one? INVO? We're above VWAP. INVO, yeah. And we're above VWAP. Yeah, it sounds like it's resonating with just about everybody here. We've all done it. We all held way too long, unfortunately. And I think most of us, myself included, most of us were told to sell and we refused to sell. I know AMC at 70, 71, and $72 at the fucking top. My wife told me to sell several times and I refused. I, I was so confident it was going to go to 100 plus and it never fucking did. Like at 70, 71, 72, the tippy top. My wife was telling me to sell and I fucking didn't. I didn't end up officially selling until it like dropped down to the 40s. I did end up leaving mostly overall positive. I still have some runners in AMC hoping for the cuck and duck hold and hope one day. But like I could have sold at 70. I was only selling in the 40s instead. Lesson hard learned. And if you ain't held too long, yeah, everyone, everyone has. And if you haven't, it's just because you haven't started trading yet, but you will. It'll happen. Market's looking kind of boring today, as we suspected on a Friday. A lot of people just take Fridays off. They're not even here to trade up or down, so you just have less volume overall. 
A lot of people that are here are just here to sell their positions before the weekend comes because they don't want to hold these high risk assets over the weekend when these companies could drop bad news and then you can't sell till Monday morning. But now all that selling sentiment pressure has built up and everybody wants to sell first thing Monday morning and it creates a 40% downward price action. So people don't like to hold them over the weekend in the event that that might happen because a lot of times these high risk penny stocks tend to do that, drop bad news on the weekend, and then Monday it fucking plummets. So Fridays are typically the best day to just sit it out, and it usually creates for a semi-boring slow day. That doesn't mean there won't be runners, but typically a little more boring. Yep, yep, yep. <clears throat> With that being said, guys, it is about 9.13. Not a whole lot's going on in this market right now. I feel like we gave you guys a pretty good watch list. So if you're in this live chat, I'm talking to you. You've never got our trade alerts. You've never seen what it's like to get Team Alpha trading. You want to get our trade alerts for free for the next five days. Then I'm going to post a link down there in the live chat. Go ahead and do that, guys. It'll start Monday for you guys. So you'll get our trade alerts all week, Monday through Friday next week. Hopefully, we'll hit a ton of bangers. You'll also get access to the live stream here, the private live stream, when we switch over here. So if you're watching this, you've never done the free trial, you've never got our trade alerts before, go down there, click the link. It's going to ask you to put in your name, phone number, and email. And as soon as we get off here around 930, we're going to send you a link to a private live stream. You'll also start getting our trade alerts sent straight to your phone as well. So hope you enjoy that. Use it. Use it as a reference. Hopefully next week we'll make a ton of damn money. You'll be able to retire. Your wife will love you. Your kids will respect you and your friends will want to be you. With that being said, that's all I got for you greedy little bastards. Mike, you got anything else for the people before we switch over? Um, I, well, Here's one more good question. Uh, maybe you already answered this and I tuned out. Can you explain the VWAP bounce and what you're looking for? Uh, With the VWAP? Can you answer that? not necessarily looking for a bounce we're looking for the breakout above the vwap so like a lot of times with these stocks for example uh i have drct pulled up right now right so you can see it's trading below the vwap so what we've noticed is when that five minute candle closes and opens above the vwap just like the same same idea as the breakout trading strategy a lot of times these stocks go for a nice five to fifteen percent move right after um so i mean if it's trading above the vwap then it's using it as support then you can use the VWAP and you can get in near a support level, but we like to play breakouts. So specifically, we're looking for stocks that are trading below the VWAP and then a five minute candle closes above the VWAP. Hope that made sense. Yep, yep. Well, that's all I got. All right, guys. Link is down there in the top uh, pinned comment in the live chat. All right, we're going to switch over here soon. We'll talk to all of y'all later. Love y'all. Trade smart. And uh, we'll talk to y'all later. Deuces.